Brian Hewitt. As we bring the living word of God to all nations, speaking of the truth, the clarity of the minds, the renewing of the hearts. And God loves us, changing us, bringing us to the all and all the matchless name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we come into the grace of his love. Again, I'm Brian Hewitt of Morningstar Communications Network Embassy and Ministries, coming to you from Los Angeles, California, live over our Jcast Network at, at brianhewitt.com. You can watch us live there, watch us over Ustream and YouTube. Today we're going to be speaking of the fall of Nineveh and how that equates to where you and I are living in today's world. I was with this, brothers and sisters, we encourage we want to know you and, and, you, and yeah, of course you want to know us so come visit us at brianhewitt.com brianhewitt.com and again I thank you for your prayers and support as far as my wife uh, bringing up being healed from her recent stroke as well as her prior to that her, her wrist surgery and so she's coming back for nuggets of he nuggets from heaven at the 11 a.m. hour Pacific Daylight Time this coming Saturday, September 29th, as well as she's launching a blog, another blog that she could tell you personally herself through her victory testimony. So again, so we're going to be speaking of the fall of Nineveh. We're going to be in Nahum chapter 1, and let us just put our temp, get a clean sheet of notebook, notebook paper, because as always, we'll be doing some tap dancing through the scriptures. Let's go before the throne of gold and pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. We'll lay our hearts before you. You are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. You give us the strength to lift up your prayers and forgiveness and repentance unto you every day, O Lord, so you, so you can pour your new mercies upon us every day. Dear Lord, we thank you for the strength, for your wisdom and discernment as to cry unto you that we want to know you ever some more every day. We thank you for this message that has been delivered from your throne room through this ministry as a vehicle to bring the lost, the lived as a lostness, to having that face of you, O oh God, in their hearts, in their new hearts, in their minds of clarity. May we bring a clarity, a peace of the minds throughout the world by defeating all anger in ourselves and the world around us from our neighborhoods to our to the countries, may you, O oh God, bring your leaders to replace, to go into Syria, to go into countries in sub-Saharan Africa that need the nutritional, loving support of your love, the living word of God. For in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Very interesting lesson that we have today. The Burden Against Nineveh, the Book of the Vision of Nahum and we come brothers and sisters at the same time that good old Jeremiah and Sephaniah were pronouncing judgment against Judah another prophet was directing his attention at another enemy the name is a sense of symbolic of the message of the book which means consolation which was intended to, com to comfort the oppressed and the afflicted people of Judah. Some think that Capernaum was the birthplace, the village of Nahum may have been his, his, the birthplace. But concerning his message, his message usually dated around 630 years before the time of Christ. The northern kingdom of Israel was already in Assyrian captivity. Assyria itself was still a world power though a state of decline. But the fall of Nineveh, this makes it work a complement to, to that of Jonah. Though by this time no mercy would be shown, judgment would be final. Nineveh's doom was declared. Like our own lives can be declared doomed if we don't turn our lives over to the Lord. If we stay in the complacency that everything is fine with me, I know that someone's dying of a cocaine addiction and I'm doing nothing about it. Or I know that Sarah is in trouble and I'm not doing anything about it. I'm not lifting up a prayer. 
of any of any attitude or gratitude what God has done to other countries. God can do to Syria. That's my guarantee tonight. But God's vengeance, even though he is slow to anger, verses 1 through, verses chapter, verse 2 of chapter 1 of Nahum, God is a jealous at the Lord and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious and will take vengeance on his adversaries and he will reserve wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and in great power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The clouds are the dust of his feet. God's wrath on his enemies. Especially to those who think they can defeat God. To think they can mesmerize both the world because they have the power of the Antichrist. You, as a child of God, have more power than 10,000 Antichrists if they walked into your house today. All you have to do is say, Jesus, and they flee. Jesus, and they turn into, into their own convulsions. Jesus gives you the power of love. We sing of the oracles of prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come into this moment of, of revelation that is being brought to us upon our own world from this time of history uh, we are speaking. In Zephaniah chapter 2, and he will stretch out his hand against the north to destroy Assyria and make Nineveh a desolation as dry as the wilderness. Turn to God. Turn to God. The fierceness of his anger described. The Lord is slow to ang anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. How many of us can do that? and dries up the rivers, Bashan and Karma wither, and the flower of Lebanon wilts. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt, and the earth heaves at his presence. Yes, the world and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can endure the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. In Jesus' name. We come into the time of the love of Jesus Christ. There shall no be there shall be good tidings in Judah. She can keep her feast. None of his destruction has been commanded by the Lord. But the siege and the capture of the city. Furious preparation for the battle is described. Resistance is futile. Captivity has been decreed. The gates of the rivers are opened, and the place a palace is dissolved. The Babylon Chronicle tells that Nineveh fell because the flooding rivers made breaches into the city's defense. In chapter 2, verse 5 through 7, he remembers his nobles. They stumble in their walk. They make haste to her walls, and the defense is prepared. The gates of the rivers are open, and a palace is dissolved. It is decreed, she shall be led away captive, she shall be brought up. Does this ring any bells, brethren? And, her, and she shall be brought up, and her maidens shall lead her as with the voice of doves beating their breast. We can have more. For the world, we can have more to the world. 
we can give more to the world by giving ourselves as peaceful messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ. By bringing the peace of the Lord coming to each and every one of us tonight. Nobody should have leadership or be in a position of leadership if you're being strung and led by other powers that be. We need to take a stand. We need to bring all of Satan's wicked lies by exposing them with, this, with the sword of the Spirit which is the living word of God. I am proud to say that I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I serve him faithfully. My wife, who just survived a battle of tribulations through, through health issues, if we are left to help those to, to bring the lost to the fold of Christ. Or we are told either to starve to death or to surrender and bow down to the Antichrist. We will starve to death. Our children know that and they are with us. Our, my godchildren who are great musicians in the in music industry they know that and they support us but with such elegance that we do strive for in the ways of man in the ways of the world there is nothing wrong in having prosperity because where God have a, has a plan he has prosperity yet we have a responsibility that the fall of Nineveh does not end up being the fall of our own communities that is, where the God, that is where the power of the Lord comes in. The Etch is sack of the city. The, her inhabitants flee the city is plundered. In chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. Though Nineveh of old was, was like a pool of water. Now they flee away. Halt, halt. They cry, but no one turns back. Take spoil of silver, take spoil of gold. There is no end of treasure, a wealth of every desirable prize. She is empty, desolate. And waste. The heart melts and the knees shake. Much pain is in, is in every side and all their faces are drained of color. Many people say to me, at least quite a few times every week, if, if there is a God, why is such turmoil happening? We need to bring the conclusion of the matter to the fold. Come to Jesus. Turn to God. Get into the life of praying ceaselessly. Cry unto the Lord that you want to know him ever so more every day, stronger than you met you yesterday. Then he'll give you the wisdom and discernment. We are all sinful. I am, my wife, our children. Born into this world through sin. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. But we come into this fold of the truth knowing knowing that we can defeat the curse of the law which is poverty sickness and death doesn't mean that we're going to be billionaires overnight but we can have the power to make this change right now In 11 through 13 of chapter 2, where is the dwelling of the lions? And the feeding place of the young lions, where the lion walked, the lioness and the, and the lion's cub, and no one made them afraid. The lion tore in pieces enough for, 
for his cubs, killed for his lioness, filled his caves with prey. Because of her sins, none of his doom deserved. Her woe will be due to her sins. The Lord will uncover her shame and make her a spectacle. And that can happen again. In verse 1 through 4 and chapter 3. Woe to the bloody city, it is full of the lies and robbery, its victims never departs. Now listen to this. The noise of a whip and the noise of rattling wheels, the galloping horses of clattering chariots, horsemen charged with bright sword and glittering spear. There is a multitude of slain, a great number of bodies, countless corpses. They stumble over the corpses because of the multitude of harlotries of the seductive harlot. The mistress of sorceries, who sells nations through her harlotries and families through her sorceries. Is that the world you want to live in? It continues in verse 5 through 7. Is this what you want? Behold, I am against you, says the Lord of hosts. I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nations your nakedness, the kingdom and the kingdom your shame. I will cast ab abominable filth upon you and make you vile and make you a spectacle. It will come to pass that all who look upon you will flee from you and say, None of it is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Where shall I seek comforters for you? It's time to have that comfort zone with Christ, to move into God's blessing and God's love. We come into the realities of knowing from every st finish line, from every middle ground that we must walk through and survive and breathe through, there has to be a starting gate, there has to be a starting point, a point of contact to begin with. This is your point of contact right now. My point of contact started decades ago when I chose the way of the absolute truth and a different part of the country some years much later my wife returned herself over to the Lord. Though we were about 4,000 miles apart roughly let's say that was our first handshake to each other when we turned each our, our lives over to the Lord. And yes in our spirits God told us that we would meet didn't know that I would end up in California, didn't know that we would have spouses before each other and children, but we're here declaring the love of the Lord, declaring each and every one of you. Romans ten thirteen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear God, give us the strength to come forward. We no longer can afford to take time and say, time out, God. I need time to think. No, because none of it could be you tomorrow. could be you tonight. Look what happened to Jericho. Jericho had, what, 40 plus years to repent. Pride got in its way. Pride can be a cancer that makes you and chokes you and swallows you up and even f makes you forget your name. Trust me, I've been there myself. I've been there myself and I've been back east when I was getting my feet wet in ministry. 40 below zero degree weather, I want to bring a, a man 20 or 30 years older than me into a shelter. Totally emptied out. Satan had them out of the kabachis, and he said to me, he knew what he was doing. There's no room for pride. 
There's no one man army in God's army. Repeat this after me, please. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you. And ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life. Fill me and take control. To make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. That's my wife praising him in the background. I am your lifting your name up to the heavens. Most important. Right before the throne of God. The angels of, angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. Jesus name what a great way to wake up in the a.m. hours overseas in Europe Asia Africa India Pacific Rim great way to get the evening going here in the North America South America Central America Mexico Canada we love you we love you and need you the importance of prayer keeps you from having your own destructive self turned into Nineveh the importance of prayer is like getting that invitation to a great social. But as you go into this room, you realize you're alone with the king. That's prayer. God's power that lifts the blindness from your eyes to see a four-letter word that no longer that you can put into a simple definition because you cannot, because now Love spells out eternity. Kingdom bound to God's heaven. It will take all of eternity to know the heart of God. It will take all of eternity for you to express your love to God. In Jesus' name. We share an invitation for you to travel to be part, a financial partner into our ministries. Our full name is the Morningstar Communications Network MC Ministries. We are 501c3 certified church here in the United States. We're coming to this message of the being of the loving truth, the loving depth to each and every heart, and to come and as you are planting a financial seed into this ministry, you'll see from John chapter 4, verse 35, your harvest is white. You don't have to wait four months from now for the harvest. Your harvest is now. Just get yourself into the first offering, which is the offering of obedience. Get yourself into midweek <coughs> Bible study, Sunday services of the saints. Excuse me. Sunday services of the saints. Fellowship. The importance of fellowship. Ironing, sharpening, iron, sharpening, iron. And as we move into this reality and we plant that financial seed into this ministry, God shows you the manifestation. For the living word of God is always pregnant, revealing the manifestation of God's glory. For the windows of heaven will open up above you and pour down blessings upon you that you have no room in your houses, your barns. Destroy them. Destroy them. In the master's name of Jesus. You can make your donation over our website at briantewitt.com briantewitt.com by clicking on the donation button or going right to the contact link and sending your check payable to Morningstar Communication Network or MCM Ministries to the address seen on the contact link. You don't. God did not cre create you. God did not love you to destroy you. Jesus loves you. We are living in the end times of end times. We come into 
who despite her strength Ethiopia chapter 3 of 9 and 10 Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength and it was boundless Put and Lubim were your helpers yet she was carried away she went into captivity her young children also were dashed into pieces at the head of every street they cast lots for her honorable so would it be for Nineveh chapter 3 verse 11 you will also be drunk you will be hidden you will also seek refuge from the enemy yet her strength and wealth will not save save her. her stronghold will fall verses 12 and 13 all your strongholds are fig trees with ripened figs if they are shaken they will fall into the mouth of the eater surely your people in the midst are, are women the gates of your land are wide open for your enemies fire shall devour the bars of your gates the end has come for Nineveh all her efforts her wealth her army will be futile her leaders are dead the people are scattered verse 18 and 19 your shepherds slumber the king of Assyria your nobles rest in the dust your people are scattered in the mountains and no one gathers them your injury has no healing your wound is severe all you hear all who hear news of you will clap their hands over you or clap their hands over you your injury has no healing those who hear of her fall do rejoice is that what you want for yourself the, the rest of verse 19 of chapter 3 the injury has no healing the wound is severe all who hear of you will clap their hands over you for upon whom has your wickedness passed continually Romans 11:22 Therefore consider the goodness and severity of God and those who fall who fell severity but toward you goodness if you continue in his goodness otherwise you will be cut off very simple as that continue in God's goodness God's greatness be 100% obedient to God Get all those nine cylinders working for you from the nine fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Love is the greatest gift of all. Peace, as they say in today's troubled, wonderful world, cannot be negotiated. It must be prayed through. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, that concludes our broadcast for this evening. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. We'll lay our hearts before you. You are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. Come into our lives. Come into our wounds of healing. Let the living word of God be our healing, O oh Lord. Give us the strength to get into the scriptures of your love and your support. Give us the strength to lift up our repentance and our prayers daily so you can pour your new mercy upon us every day. We thank you for your wisdom and discernment. We thank you for the cry that we want to know you ever some more every day, stronger than we knew you yesterday. Oh Lord, oh God, oh God, I love you. We love you. Bring a healing of peace throughout all the countries, and your angels show the realities of your love. For you, where you have a plan, you have provisions for us. And each and every day, in Jesus' name, brethren. Once again, that concludes our broadcast for this evening from Los Angeles, California. I'm Brian Hewitt. On behalf of my talented, anointed, beautiful wife, Anita Hewitt, and yours truly, the man, we thank you for your time. Until next time, do you see up to date with all of our news and information our exciting crusades coming to your part of the world at BrianHewitt.com. BrianHewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, audios. Good day for the people.